when that time comes, uh, it's star six to unmute yourself. And uh, I think that's about it. So, Jim, if you're good to go, you can take it away. Okay. Thanks, Zach. Uh, um, uh, this traditionally has been the uh, call where uh, the office uh, management uh, gets to talk about the price uh, for the new season and then any other things that uh, they're dealing with, particularly as far as the company is concerned. And this, you know, involves the sales force. And, of course, if we got customers on or potential customers, uh, that'll give them a little introduction to some of the things that we have to deal with as a company. Uh, my uh, job usually is to kick off and give current events. And so... I'm going to focus a little bit more on pricing current events, uh, and they're they're fairly significant, or or giving us a certain amount of problem that we have to deal with. Uh, understanding that we try to price our product accordingly so that uh, we can get some profit, but we want to keep the price as low as we can to help our customers. And probably one of the biggest things that's turned up most recently is. Uh, complaints by the North American uh, phosphate producers, particularly Mosaic, uh, has gone to the government contending that uh, prices are being undercut uh, from North Africa, Morocco, and then from Russia. Uh, these are uh, two of the larger producers of phosphate materials in the world, along with China, and then the U.S. fits in there about fourth or fifth, depending on the season. And they are contending that they're dumping phosphate onto the market uh, at cheaper prices uh, to try to control the market a little bit more. And so right away, our suppliers start waving a gun at us because they believe that uh, if duties are imposed by the Trump administration, uh, that this will run phosphate prices up. So they... That hasn't, uh, the Trump administration is not committed to that at this point in time. So again, it's all uh, a game of poker at this point. Uh, their contention is that if that occurs, they've got to run the price up uh, to, to deal with that. So uh, again, that, that's been uh, an influence with our suppliers when we deal with them particularly. Uh, the other side of the uh, price situation is what's happened with commodity prices. Uh, corn and beans both have risen significantly, and this all started back on the 30th of September when we, uh, the U.S. government put out the stocks in all positions report, and they lowered the volume of both corn and beans uh, that are stored on farm and in uh, cooperative hands or in the institutional hands. And <clears throat> there's been quite a bit of banner back and forth. It started out very significantly. Uh, beans didn't make a limit up move, but they were up 35 cents and right off of the bat. And this drug corn with it. And then eventually corn started to gain some momentum at that point. After about three or four days of up move, then there was a little slowdown, a little regression. Uh, then uh, at that point, uh, we started to see uh, reports about the weather in Brazil turning significantly drier. Uh, they've been in a semi-drought situation. And what that basically did was stop the uh, early soybean planting in Brazil because of the dry weather. You know, there was just not enough moisture for germination. And see, that's gone on long enough now that uh, that will take away uh, bean supply in January from Brazil. And a lot of the larger suppliers, they look forward to that, to use that against the U.S. prices, uh, another source of soybeans. And without that occurring, now they've had to come back to the U.S. and buy beans. And so <clears throat> what we see at, at this point is that the U.S. is the only game in town for soybeans probably till sometime in February. They're talking about rainfall coming to Brazil uh, here in the uh, near future, but again, that's pretty well taken Brazil out of the market in January. So uh, with that, uh, we've started to see another up move as far as uh, soybean prices are concerned. Uh, 
There is a WASAID report tomorrow from the government where they will basically define the acres that will be harvested and they will define the yield on crops, corn, soybeans, and wheat also. And right now, the uh, Dow Jones uh, industrials are contending that there will be yield regression in both corn and beans. So again, uh, that's coming from uh, reports of the harvest that's going on now. Uh, if you've been watching the weather maps, uh, we're bone dry everywhere. I mean, uh, the weather map this morning, the only rain that they showed was a little bit along the eastern coast of Florida. The rest of the country was pretty well uh, rainfall free. Uh, we know this with the wildfires that are going on west. The drought monitor is showing significant dryness out west. Uh, for us, even, they're talking a little bit of moisture, but uh, they cut those percentages down significantly. They cut the volumes down quite significantly. Uh, so what we're seeing is that uh, this, this drought uh, effect is pretty significant. Uh, our district manager in Iowa has been chatting about this since the Duraco went through uh, back on August 10th. He said there's going to be a significant amount of damage there, but he said really the dry weather is uh, very significant uh, in a good share of Iowa. And of course, uh, that, that's what we are seeing. So again, this has uh, started to affect the, the actual production of corn and beans. Uh, the other thing with the... Um, uh, stocks in all position report on corn. What is turning out now at this point is that drop in corn stock is related to the 2019 season. Uh, the very wet year, a lot of overcast. Uh, there was discussion about that last year that that was going to affect the energy level, you know, in the corn produced and that these feeders would start to see a significant difference in how this corn was being fed. And again, the government kind of poo-pooed that situation, but uh, the stocks in all position report pretty well has confirmed that at this point, uh, that the usage of corn in volume has been extremely higher than what they thought, because again, it just doesn't have the feed value to it. And uh, okay, so you're supposed to get so many pounds a gain for pound to feed, and it's not even coming close. So your your volume is disappearing. And several of our uh, very good customers that are in the feed business or in the livestock business were discussing this uh, a year ago, uh, even even longer than that, because they knew uh, that the quality of the feed with the lack of sunlight was going to be problematic. And their problem was trying to figure out when this increase in price will come, because this has basically caught everybody uh, flat-footed. Uh, all these experts that tell you how to market they didn't have a clue this thing was coming. And uh, when you listen to their reports, they, the honest ones are basically saying that. And see, again, uh, our livestock guys recognize this uh, because, number one, our guys recognize quality and feed stuff. You know, that's one of the goals they have following the program. And if you don't get the sunlight, uh, there's just uh, no way to produce energy. And see, that was a big problem in 2019. So that volume of usage has gone up quite significantly, which is cut, cutting back on the storage volumes that we have, which has, uh, you know, uh, affected the price quite significantly. So that's, that's pretty well etched in stone at this point. And then the big decision will be uh, in January is how good was the crop this year. Again, I think the quality of it should be pretty decent since we've had, you know, a fairly high amount of sunlight because of the dry weather. But again, uh, how much volume has been affected and then uh, how much the quality last year has affected uh, the total carryover is uh, fairly substantial. So again, uh, this is feeding into this higher commodity price. And it's, it's holding fairly strong at this point. I think uh, guys that are strapped on now with harvest, you know, uh, <clears throat> if you're, you don't make a move, you know, until you're pretty well done with harvest, you need to keep an eye on this market because it's just uh, contradictory to what we normally see. At harvest time, there's volume, nobody cares until the price, you know, decreases, whereas now it just keeps stair-stepping up. So we're at, uh, you know, prices that 
even 10 days ago, nobody even thought was possible. So I think guys need to really be aware of that factor. Uh, we've got several other things we can talk about, but uh, I'd really like to turn this over to, you know, Matt, Rick, and Russ, and let those guys run with it as far as they want to run with it. And if we've got time at the end, we've got some articles that came into the office that are pretty significant. Uh, you guys will get a look at them. They'll come out in future sales letters. Uh, and then eventually for the customers, uh, they'll see it in the solutions. So, but uh, at this point, uh, those guys are going to take over, and however you guys want to take over, I'm going to turn it over to you. So whoever's in the lead can jump in and uh, take it from there. And if you guys are a little short before the uh, 10 o'clock hour, I'll just jump right back in again and uh, finish this thing up. So whoever wants to take over, it's your ball game now. So thanks, Jim. Um, this is Rick. Um, so uh, Matt and Russ and I were each going to uh, kind of touch on a, a different thing. I think Matt's focus is really going to be on the pricing, which is probably the most interesting thing that um, people are listening for. Um, <clears throat> I think Russ has got some good information on our plans for the upcoming winter sales meeting. And um, I just have a few notes. Um, about an interesting discussion I had with Jenny about a year ago. So um, uh, if Matt or Russ, I uh, think we talked about maybe you guys wanting to go first. Yeah, uh, thank uh, Russ, if you wanna uh, take your part, I'll just um, string everybody along a little bit further. I'm looking for <laughs> I'm looking for Russ, and if he's there, I have him do star six. I can't find him on my screen. All right, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we got you. Yes. Can you guys hear me? You're there. All right. You. Hey, guys, it's, it's Russell. Um, yeah, I just wanted to take a quick second to talk about the, the winter meeting, what our plans are with that. Um, obviously, you know, we've, we've talked about in the past uh, educational solutions that uh, due to everything going on, we just didn't want to, you know, expose the company, expose one another to bringing people into one location. So we've uh, made the tough decision to move everything to a virtual platform. And we're looking at a lot of different ways to kind of, you know, obviously we won't have the face-to-face -face sort of uh, contact that we all am sure enjoy and whatnot. But... <clears throat> Uh, there's a lot of other kind of benefits to kind of maybe sweeten the, the deal a little bit. So one of the things we're looking at is kind of spreading it out over a couple different days, the shorter segments. Um, and we're looking at bring, being able to uh, allow customers and other maybe smaller people that normally can't come uh, to be able to call in for a couple of those days. So if you have any customers that you think could be uh, good people to, to, to tune in and listen, uh, to watch, uh, it's all going to be through Zoom, so you can either call in, you can uh, come into your computer and watch it uh, with the uh, visual aspect of it. But um, yeah, we're just trying to make it as good of an experience as we can for for all of you guys to, to get the most bang for you guys as well. Um, a couple other things, just to kind of quickly note, uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, videos and podcasts, so we encourage you guys to take a look at those, uh, share those with any, any customers, anyone that you think could find interest in it. So, uh, you yeah, know, just keep an eye out for those things because we, we uh, got a lot of things coming out in the, the near future and things that were released over the summer and i um, pretty happy with the way things have turned out. So with that, I'll turn it over to Matt. Okay. Thanks, Russ. Now I know the, uh, the suspense is out there with the pricing, but uh, so I'll string you along a little bit more. But uh, now, first, uh, uh, you've heard about you know about uh, Jim describing the uh, you know the raw pricing pressures. Um, also, I mean the economy is doing pretty well. Um, so yeah, we've had to deal with a lot of uh, pressures from all the vendors. All of our vendors were. Um, 
you know, pushing for higher pricing this year. Um, and of course, at the same time, um, you know, we're we're working with, you know, multiple different uh, vendors for for each of our raw materials, and and um, you know, those are still somewhat limited though because. You know, we we are still focusing on the highest quality um, raw materials that that uh, we can purchase, and you know that's we we are absolutely not going to compromise quality for price. So um, rest assured that that's 100% um, the case. So um, so without further suspense. Um, I can. I'm happy to announce that our raw material price, our our finished good pricing for GMS for this year is basically identical to last year. Um, and obviously, that was a lot of work on our part to uh, to get to that point that we can say that our pricing is going to be the same. Um, so that's I think phenomenal news, especially considering. Um, you know Jim's discussion about uh, commodity pricing being uh, higher for, in particular, for corn and soybeans. That'll be great. Um, and at the same time, hopefully, you are able to um, capitalize on that. You know, and get some higher pricing in your pockets. But at the same time, uh, no increase in uh, in GMS. Um, so that's the good news. Um, I'd say the only thing that we're not going to change, uh, and not going to offer this year, is we're not going to offer the 2% discount, um, which is very minimal anyway. So um, that does get us back some of the, we did have some raw price increase, so we were able to you know, offset it with not offering that 2%, but, um, and also it just, it's, it was very minimal anyway, but the good news is, is we are going to offer the 10% uh, for November. We are still going to offer, just like we did last year, we are extending that through December the 15th. So instead of a four week, we're, we're offering that for a full six weeks. Um, so I know that was a big thing. It helped out a lot of guys, helped, helped you to see uh, more of your customers. So um, we are offering that again this year, and um, so November 1st through December the 15th this year. Um, the other periods you'll see, uh, discount periods you'll see publicized um, when you get the, the price sheets and the, and the solution, and all that's coming um, in the mail to you in the next couple days. So um, that's the good news with that, too. Um, one more piece of good news is um, for the U.S. and for Canada, uh, we can now accept credit cards through PayPal. Um, the second piece of good news is uh, for the U.S., we can accept, we now accept John Deere credit. Um, a lot of you have asked asked over the years uh, the, for us to be able to offer that, and I'm happy to announce that we now have that option. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't offer it for Canada because, um, obviously, being a separate company, you, um, uh, Growers Chemical Canada was too small, and John Deere would not allow us to offer it for that company. But or Growers Mineral Corp. U.S., uh, we have that option. Um, take a close look when you get those price lists um, in the next few days. You'll see that they're a little bit different um, in that they have two different prices. They have our cash price, which, uh, which is what you're used to in the past, you know, cash meaning cash checks, uh, credit card, I'm sorry, cash checks and um, uh, money orders. That's the, that's the cash price. Um, they also, you also have another column, uh, which is the regular price. Um, and that would be for uh, things like credit cards or John Deere credit. Um, so um, 
other than that, um, I guess I just wanted to say thank you for um, a great year and I'm looking forward to another solid year with you. And, and um, I'm, uh, I'm available for any, any discussion uh, about pricing, any questions you have. Um, if you obviously were, were uh, with the credit cards and John Deere credit, uh, please feel free to reach out to me if you've got any questions on that. Um, uh, phone is always available. So I think that's all I've got for you. And I uh, can turn it over to, uh, to Rick. Great. Thanks, Matt. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, I think it's important that y'all know that uh, one of the reasons that we're able to to be as effective with pricing as we are is because of the hard work Matt has put into this. He's developed great relationships with our suppliers, and that's really the key to getting the favorable pricing that we're after. Um, so hats off to Matt. Um, it's a it's a tough thing to do, and in, in the middle of all of the other responsibilities he's got. Um, but he's done it well, and I appreciate everything he's done there. <clears throat> the other person I'd like to give a hats off to is Russell. Um, you know, he's taken on this brand new position, uh, the new position for the company, and with that comes a lot of uncertainty and what are his responsibilities. Um, but he's 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 done a wonderful job, <clears throat> and I really appreciate the enthusiasm, the creativity that he's put into it. And as time goes on, I think you'll see more evidence of um, his input and the, the positive impact he's going to make in the company. <clears throat> and I really appreciate the, the work he's been doing on the winter sales meeting because no doubt this is a, a weird time weird time of year for all of us, and this is kind of an unusual situation. Um, but he's he's got a really effective plan. It's not the same meeting, but in some ways it could even be a little better. Because uh, we'll, we're able to do some things that we were not able to do before, so <clears throat> uh, I appreciate appreciate that very much. So, um, so my little little part, um, I was just I was thinking that uh, about a conversation Jenny and I had about a year ago, and um, at that time her focus was on regaining her health. She wasn't really focused on on the business as much. And um, we had lots of, lots of conversations about things that she wanted to see. And um, one of the things that she made pretty clear was that um, her life, she she's made a commitment to growers. And she felt strongly that the people associated with growers, and that's our employees, the sales reps, the district managers, and our customers, you've all made a commitment of growers, whether it's a financial commitment or a time commitment. And Jenny honored that, and, and she felt very strongly about doing everything she can to support those people. And I don't think most people understood that about Jenny. She was a very effective manager and a, a good boss, um, but her commitment to the company and to those associated with it is was something to see. Um, so like I said, about a year ago, we had this conversation. She said, okay, there's three things that I need you to work about, work on. When I'm not at Growers, I need you to be me. I need you to be my voice at Growers. So there's three things I want you to keep in mind. First is I want our family to be happy, regardless of what happens to me. <clears throat> I want our, our family to be happy and um, well cared for. Um, she wanted to see the company grow and prosper, and that was really, really important to her because since she became president, she'd done a lot of things to build the company up and moving it in a great direction. She was brought in a lot of great people um, and was creating a really great team. Um, And the last thing she said is, and this to her was maybe the most important thing, is she wanted to make sure that we were giving support to those people who had supported us. And that 
our customers and our employees and our district managers and sales reps. So I have to tell you that, you know, that was the last significant conversation we had regarding business. And I've never forgotten that. <clears throat> and um, so in my work at helping to manage growers, it's something I always keep in mind, that this is more than just a business to her. Um, she felt a strong obligation to all you folks and wanted to make sure we did everything we could to support you. Um, so, like I said, in every decision I make, that's one of the first things I think about. Um, Jenny was really clear that she wanted us to run the business the way we wanted to, um, but she wanted to make sure that those associated with the, with the company were supported and we did everything we can to help them grow and prosper as well. Um, so I just thought that was kind of interesting and it's something I haven't shared with, with many people. But like I said, I think you all have a commitment to growers in some way or another. So I just thought it was important that you understood the kind of company we are and you know what our roots are um, and what we're kind of all about. Um, so that's, that's kind of all I've got. Um, I'm uh, open to any questions as are Matt and, Matt and uh, Jim, I'm sure. But um, we're excited about uh, this coming year. And, um, and if there's anything we can do to make your lives easier, please let us know. So I will turn it back over to Jim or Zach, whoever gets the ball at this yeah. point. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that'd be me. Thanks, Rick. Uh, Fine job, you guys. Uh, just excellent. Just excellent. Uh, <clears throat> there's there's a few things in there that I'd like to uh, expand on a little bit. Um, uh, you know, for a fair number of years, um, guys have asked about you know uh, credit cards or or dear credit, and uh, that's been something that really uh, the company has not uh, you know pursued. And uh, with, uh, you know, Rick and Russ coming in, uh, in, in the situation they are in and management, uh, they both felt that that was something that <clears throat> to advance the company we needed to pursue. And uh, Matt's done an excellent job with that. And we, we've had some guys that have already used, you know, both Deer uh, and, uh, and uh, credit cards. So again, uh, if you feel you have customers that are interested in that, uh, Matt's your boy. You know, you have to call Matt, see how to handle it. Uh, you know, you get your toe in the water to, if you think it'll help you. Several of you have expressed that you think it will be very helpful, you know, for your part of the country. And uh, more and more guys are looking at it as you look at the seed corn companies even the small line seed companies are starting to offer both credit card and deer credit. So again, we felt uh, we had to move with the times and uh, getting that implemented, I think uh, will be uh, helpful. And hopefully uh, you guys can uh, take advantage of that. Uh, the uh, pricing situation, um, I think Rick described it, you know, correctly. Matt's done a real nice job of uh, dealing with the uh, raw material suppliers, uh, his idea that uh, you know, he's developed relationships with these guys is absolutely correct. You know, uh, you guys yourself dealing with uh, other suppliers understand that uh, everybody's in the game, and so you've got to, you know, set a parameter and then work from there. And uh, <clears throat> Matt, in his prior life, is had a lot of experience with that, and that's really helped us as a company bringing that experience to the table. And so again, that's another thing. If you have any interest in that side of the equation, uh, you know, talk with Matt about it. Uh, the fertilizer efficiency thing that we have devised, and uh, we will be discussing in detail, you know, at the annual meeting. Uh, that's another thing that. Uh, we tried to implement that 
uh, a fair number of years ago, but really didn't have the expertise uh, to put it on paper. And Matt's really brought that to the table, uh, you know, with the spreadsheet. And uh, it is it has made it uh, fairly simple. So I think uh, guys, uh, you know, want to work with that, um, that uh, they can uh, they can do that. So and, and Matt will help us with that. I'm kind of the uh, the agronomy part of it, or the, the you know the knowledge of the different compounds that you can use in fertilizers. So we kind of double team that thing. And Matt's getting much more articulate at it at this point. So uh, we'll we'll <laughs> get him to where he understands where the fertility side of it is, and it's. We'll, we'll work that in depth. Zach Smith is going to handle that at the annual meeting, <clears throat> and that that was another thing. Um, I just got a I got a text from Carla uh, to let you guys know that the calendars are now available. Um, there's been uh, some subtle changes to the calendar, upgrades uh, in the calendar. Um, I'm old school, but I'll tell you the upgrades I I really like. They look good. Um, I think they'll be well accepted, you know, by the agricultural community. And uh, this year's calendar looks very, very nice. Uh, it's gone together very well. Carla put a lot of sweat into that thing, and it uh, it really looks nice. And I think you guys will be very happy with it. So, you know, if you need some early calendars when you make some sales calls, you just have to get a hold of Carla and let her know what the situation is. We got it put to bed in pretty good shape, and. Uh, our people that we work with uh, know that you guys like it when you go to the field, you know, in early November or the end of October. So uh, they were able to get it to us in real good shape. So it 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 looks real good. Uh, the other thing uh, for the the sales side of it uh, that uh, is happening, and and Rick was correct. Uh, Russ is working on these podcasts and short videos. Uh, actually, my brother and I were involved with one, and <laughs> it turned out it turned out excellent. Um, again, it's just talking the growers program, you know. And like like my brother, you know, he he's been with it, you know, from day one basically. And so uh, Russ has got a real knack of picking this thing out, and uh, I think the problem for the bulk of our sales force is you know, how to get a hold of it and how to use it. And see, this is where I think, uh, you know, you're going to have to develop a relationship with Russ on this. And uh, he understands, you know, because he, he deals with me all the time on this inarticulate part on, you know, the, the computer, how to get it to do what you want it to do. Uh, we're eventually going to have a lot of this availability, uh, you know, on the website, but see with this, uh, virtual platform for uh, the annual meeting that's kind of gone in neutral a little bit because of all the work has to go to that and see I know a lot of you guys are very upset about this idea of not having the annual meeting and again I, we don't have any argument with you about that but uh, I mean if you're paying any attention to current events uh, you know I know a lot of you guys are watching TV all the time but uh, on on tonight's news i mean the cases are escalating again right now and see again the, the they tried the uh, the fbi foiled the plot where they were going to kidnap the governor of michigan uh, because they don't like her lockdown thing but again this is uh this is a serious problem and see uh the the people that are in charge uh and the people that agree with the lockdown you know us setting together a large group of people, especially bringing you from all different parts of North America, it's just not going to fly, guys. So uh, again, w w the risk, in my opinion, is not, um, you know, bringing you in here because, again, I, I don't think it's as high a risk as they feel. But again, uh, that that remains to be seen. But see, the offense of it to where uh, somebody goes to the authorities, you know, and the fertilizer regulators in the state of Ohio, and they shut us down. Uh, we don't, 
I'll tell you right now, guys, I want growers for 2021, man. So I don't want us in a position where we can't manufacture. And so I think uh, uh, the, this, the correct decision was made uh, not to handle this thing. And some of you were saying this is all going to change after Election Day. Well, that could very well be, but <clears throat> we're seeing that a lot of the farm shows, they've already made decisions on shutdowns on some of those, too. So, again, I think uh, we're, we're a conservative company, and I think we – aired to the conservative side to make sure that we can manufacture growers and get it to our customers for 2021. And uh, I think uh, Russ has put together a pretty nice plan here. And again, the, the big problem with it is the articulation of it, you know, with, uh, with guys that aren't very articulate, you know, with the computer. So again, uh, there'll be a lot of explanation. Anytime you got questions, you know, you got to talk to uh, Russ or Matt. Matt's very helpful on that side of the equation, too. Uh, but uh, the way he's got it set up, guys, you're going to be able to listen to it on the phone. But uh, when we do some of the research work uh, and demonstrate that, uh, you know, in a visual platform, I think you need to find somebody that can help you with that so you can really take a look at it because I think it'll it'll – give you the correct effect and what we're trying to accomplish with it. And some of this stuff that's being done in the research group is it's looking pretty interesting. And I think it's something that can really stimulate a conversation for you. So I think um, <clears throat> that part of it, uh, talking with, uh, for example, like my son-in-laws and some of the stuff that they're trying to do uh, with this COVID thing, it's uh, I think we're on the right track here. Uh, to kind of work with what we got and see, I think you guys have to start thinking about uh, as far as winter meetings are concerned, how you're going to handle that. Some guys are saying that uh, they don't think bringing guys to one restaurant, 30 guys in a restaurant or 15 guys in a restaurant is going to fly very well. So or you're going to see uh, individuals, maybe two or three guys at a guy's shop or something like that. Uh, we'd like to work with you on that. Uh, we think we can uh, uh, help with that type of thing, but you've got to decide on the area. We see a big difference across the country. Uh, you know, we get in the South, they're, they're a little touchy, particularly like in the Carolinas uh, versus somewhere like maybe, um, you know, South Dakota. So again, we have to rely on the local guys uh, to really help us with that part of it. And then uh, we'll try to we'll try to fill in the the open spots. But I think uh, with the substitute in the annual meeting, I think this can be done uh, very effectively. Uh, again, it's going to take more work on your guys's part to figure it out. Now, if you just don't feel that you want to try to make that attempt, you know you're going to be able to listen to it on the phone. Uh, there's there's no problem with that, and probably you know 75% of it is conversation. But again, that uh, 25% visual with some of the work that's being done by the research group, I think, uh, could be very helpful to you. So <clears throat> the, the meetings that will occur uh, can be virtual or be looked at, you know, uh, on the computer. But uh, if you don't feel you want to make uh, that, you know, type of commitment, you'll be able to listen to it on the phone just like you are right now. That's no problem. So again, uh, I think uh, the ability to do that is is very very uh, helpful too. Uh, you got a lot of different media's that you could use, and the one that you're if you're comfortable with your flip phone and that's all you want to do, um, you'll be able to access it. Uh, if you can't see it, then uh, you'll get copies of it, and <clears throat> it it's being put together so that can happen. Uh, again, that there will be a way to view it. Uh, if something turns up, you know, that you can't make the meeting. Uh, one of the things that Russ talked a little bit about there earlier was you're going to try to keep it, you know, within a two-hour time frame, uh, which uh, that, that kind of matches up with what we've done with winter meetings, you know, for a long time now, that after a couple hours, the, the backside can only take so much. So, uh, we try to keep it within a time frame that 
is acceptable and do it several different times rather than trying to push it all through, you know, in, in one day or one evening, per se. And that's another thing that, that we've tried to decide. Are we going to uh, set it at uh, different times? You know, there'll be some at noontime, and then there will be at least one evening one uh, so that uh, you'll have different time frames that you're working with, too, and that, those will be delineated. Uh, Russ is working on that now with the group to try to figure out uh, how we want to match up with that. I, I think the big thing is if you got a question, don't fret and stew about it. You know, call Milan and find somebody that can give you an answer on it, and then you, you can know how to plan with it. And I think another thing that uh, uh, these guys have made a decision on is this six-week period on this 10%. Uh, that went very nicely last year that, you know, it was uh, – quite a lot of pressure on guys because it was a wet year and uh, they just felt that giving you guys more time would be very helpful and it turned out that it was. Well, the way it looks this year, everybody I'm talking to, uh, you know, MacGyver's out there in Minnesota. He's got his feet up and just loving life because they're just about all done with everything. They probably got a little bit of tillage and some old corn stalks they got to bail yet, but he's pretty well done and whistling Dixie. So, uh, getting that six-week window again is going to be, you know, really a piece of cake for you guys. So I think that uh, you'll find that helpful. The uh, December thing will run into the 1st of January. A lot of guys like to get it past Amish Christmas, which I think is the 6th or 7th of January this year. Uh, they're talking about running it the 8% past that, so you have the opportunity to, to work with some of our Amish clientele at that time. So, again, I think uh, they've, they've done a real nice job of, of helping you guys in the field, you know, with these timings and uh, trying to make it so that you've got access or aren't being rushed with this thing and you can get to everybody and uh, give it the kind of, uh, you know, the attention that it really deserves. So uh, I think that all covers pretty well pricing and, and what we're seeing. Is anybody um, – I got a couple other things on these articles that we've been getting into the office that I think are pretty critical. But uh, before we get away from the pricing um, and the timing, uh, dear credit or, or credit cards, if anybody's got an open discussion that they want to open up now, uh, you got to star six yourself and uh, bring it to the table. So I'm going to let it open up and uh, see if anybody's got anything they want to discuss here at this point in time. We got a we got a few minutes left here. Okay, so everybody's happy. That's great. Uh, I think uh, you boys did a real fine job. So. Everybody seems quite content. There's not going to be any complaining or carrying on because you got everything covered just about perfectly the way it appears. Uh, the, the other thing that uh, I wanted to touch on was some of these articles that have been turning up uh, that have turned into the office. Um, the first one uh, came from Larry Webb, and it seems like the uh, a and Labs out of Canada has now implemented biological testing as part of their soil testing protocol. And see, this is something uh, I can remember back in 2010, um, after Joe came back from a few weeks off to recharge his jets, and he had the, uh, the one book that some of you guys are using. Um, I can't think of the title of it right now, but <clears throat> he was reading the biological uh, area of that particular publication. And he said, you know, Jim, I think this is something that would be very helpful to us as a company to try to have a little bit more focus on the biological activity in soil. You know, we've always discussed it in kind of a third party way, but he said, I think we need to get a little bit more specific about that. So that's when we set off was in uh, I think uh, late fall 2010 is when we introduced that concept. And we went at it several different ways. And we've been approaching that, um, you know, 
that way since that time. And uh, this article, which um, I think this was from, uh, I can't tell, probably the Ontario farmer, but these guys are talking in here how there is such a demand uh, for this soil health thing and trying to figure it out. The conventional soil test doesn't touch on it. They tried to implement the organic matter portion of the uh, conventional soil test and guys are seeing that that really doesn't tell them a lot about, uh, you know, what's happening biologically in their soil. But the thing that I find most interesting is the um, guy who is the company president uh, for Canada, this uh, Greg Patterson, and what he's talking about in here. Uh, and I'll just, I'll read part of the quote on this. He, he's discussing the type of soil uh, biological test that they're implementing. And I've heard of several of these. There's the Haney test that uh, they're using here in the States. This is uh, kind of a version of the Haney test. The problem these guys have is they want to try to nail down the specific um, populations of microbes that are really uh, telling the tale of the tape because they want to measure them and see we're finding that 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 doesn't work very well because if you're going to nail down 20 different species when you got uh, a couple hundred million in there it seems a little ridiculous and so they're trying to do different characteristics you know how well does the water percolate you know uh, what kind of respiration do they have? They're trying to measure the CO2 that's coming off of these microbes. And again, I think they're trying to quantify this, whereas uh, the yield is basically coming from the interaction of the whole, uh, the whole population that's in there. And they're never going to be able to quantify that. But the, some of the comments that he made I find very interesting. It almost sounds like a grower's program. Uh, he says in here, most per people refer to fertilizer as a chemical input. On the contrary, it should be regarded as plant food. And it's all about balance, an area where our fertilizer programs sometimes fall short. In North America, we have a love affair with nitrogen. But pushing nitrogen rates higher is actually detrimental to soil quality because it throws the overall nutrient picture out of balance. Almost sounds like a grower's meeting, doesn't it, guys? The focus, he said, should not be on more nitrogen, but on improving nitrogen use efficiency. And see, this is coming to the plate, guys, because <clears throat> they can see that this is eventually going to be affected outside of agriculture. And see, the farmer is thinking that a lot of this input is untouchable, um, from a regulatory standpoint because of, you know, having quantities of food. And I, I think you gentlemen need to look at this dicamba thing quite seriously right now. See, there's been a real rush here in the last three or four weeks to get this new dicamba product approved. And what is the new product? The new product is that they've introduced, they've put the Liberty gene in there with dicamba because dicamba is not going to be post sprayed anymore, guys. Uh, they will set the timing on it that uh, the beans might be a little bit smaller, but they're never going to get size on them because they cannot control the volatilization. They talk about they were going to try to re-register it with a product that would cut down on the volatility. Uh, we've heard that before. I mean, when I sprayed Banville back in the 70s, they came out with the Banville 2 product which was supposed to be uh, less volatile. <laughs> it was crazy. It was more volatile than the original band bill. So they don't know how to do that. And they're admitting that by getting approval from both China and the European Union for the new gene pool, which concludes the Liberty. So what the new protocol is going to be with dicamba beans is it's a, it's a pre-merge. They're going to allow you to spray that early in the game, maybe right after you plant or maybe a week after you plant before the beans get any size to them. But you will not spray that dicamba on a large plant because they cannot control the volatility of it, the vaporization of it coming back out of the plant. And see, 
That was decided by the judicial branch of the United States. The Ninth Circuit in California has pretty well decided that. They took it away from the executive branch, which is EPA, and uh, they, they have now controlled that. And see, they see that this could be coming to fertilizer at some point in time. If these water systems don't get cleaner significantly faster, uh, courts like the Ninth Circuit may get involved with that. And see, that's basically what this gentleman is saying from a &L, that we're just pounding all this nitrogen in there and it's not getting used. He actually says in the article that really 50% of applied fertilizer is all that's ever getting used at the best on the top end. So again, uh, our methodology in recognizing how important it is uh, to get that biological functioning is absolutely critical. And see, that's what we know the most about. That's what we've been doing from day one. And so hopefully uh, that education is the thing that we need to keep working on, you know, with our customers. And then there was another one that came uh, out of the research group uh, where they were talking about um, glyphosate residue in chicken litter. And they actually, in Finland, were measuring the deleterious effect on the growth of strawberries and fescue, both, uh, from that uh, residue of the glyphosate. And see, this is going to be a big problem for the organic people. They've approved this use of chicken litter because they knew that guys couldn't figure out how to get enough nitrogen on these plants, other than the guys that put on a lot of calcium and then plowed down four-year-old four -year alfalfa. Uh, they were looking for a source of nitrogen and they thought they could sell this idea of chicken litter being organic. But now that they've found uh, glyphosate residue in it, that's gonna be a big problem for them. And they're going to ignore it for as long as they can because they know it's going to decimate the industry's yield potential. But again, uh, it's contradictory to what they're proposing in the first place. So uh, I think that's uh, something that uh, growers guys uh, are going to be able to talk pretty articulately about. So uh, articles like that. And then the third one that uh, I'll just bring up quite quickly, Syngenta has bought out a major uh, biological company. And their reason for this, I thought was very interesting. Uh, and again, I know some of you guys will be a little upset with this, but the, um, uh, the CEO of Syngenta added that the acquisition of this company underlines Syngenta's growth ambitions uh, for the biological part of it. This investment also forms part of our $2 billion commitment to help farmers address the effects of climate change and improve agricultural sustainability as part of our good growth plan. And see this sustainability thing with these big companies. Um, we were with a customer just the other day selling the Whole Foods or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> they realized that uh, they got to be using sustainable practices if they want to sell at Whole Foods. So again, this is something that uh, we know a lot about, and I think it can uh, it can help you guys when you have discussions with these uh, potential customers. <laughs> so it looks like it's ten o'clock, uh, Zach Smith. I'm going to turn it back over to you and let you shut her down and tell them when the next uh, conference call is. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Jim, Russ, Rick, and Matt. That was a good call. Thank you, everybody, for listening in. The next call will be on November 12th uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Look forward to you guys coming on. We'll be back to a more regular format at that time. I hope you guys have a good October and, and good month of harvest. Thanks for listening in. Bye. Thanks, Dave.